Good morning, everyone. It's Kevin, the Paracordist. Finally pulling together a long overdue video series on how to make your own fire steel and tinder lanyard kit. This was one of the first products I ever sold when I kicked off Paracordist.com. It was something that I did for a couple of years. It was very popular and I eventually had to stop making them because I no longer had the ability to keep up with the demand. To date, I've done a video running through the Fire Steel and Tinder neck kit, talking about um, the use of magnesium, fat wood stick, which uh, we do sell at paracordis.com, the jute fob, which I've done a video how to make your own already. I'll link here. And I've done a video on tying the um, knot that forms the handle of both the fat wood, I'm sorry, uh, the magnesium stick and the fire steel. What I'm going to do in this video is follow through on that process, tying this knot, prepping the fire steel, and installing it securely. Most, if not all, of what you need for this project is shown in this video frame. You'll need a lighter. Here is my mini Bic um, in a case. You'll need needle nose pliers, which I prefer for all my knot tying work. I do not use a marlin spike for anything. You'll need some Gorilla Glue, um, paracord lacing needles make a job a lot easier, aren't an absolute necessity. You need a good pair of scissors. Uh, these are the clean cut scissors specifically designed for cutting paracord that we sell at paracordist.com. And then you need the parts. Uh, jute can be purchased at a hardware store in a roll, usually in the gardening or roping cordage aisle. And then blank fire steel rods and fat wood sticks. You can harvest a fat wood stick on your own or you can um, buy from paracordist.com as well as the um, magnesium, um, I'm sorry, the um, ferro rod. There are two things you're going to need prepped and ready before you start busting out Gorilla Glue and making that commitment to find, uh, finally install the knot on the rod. One thing is you're going to need the handle, which is this knot here. You're going to need this tied and um, ready to install. Next, you're going to need a prepped blank fire steel rod, which we'll do with another piece of equipment that I don't have shown in this picture, and that is a hacksaw. So we'll do that in a moment. First, let's address the knot. The other video, uh, done <clears throat> quite some time ago, shows you how to tie this knot. It ends with the knot, but doesn't talk the specific logistics of prepping the knot for installation on the fire steel. So that's where I'll pick up now. The tightness of this knot before you attempt to install has a lot to do with the amount of success you'll have and how clean, uh, um, literally, not messy, um, your finished product is going to be. So what I do is I, uh, for consistency, insert a magic marker or a sharpie in the loop here. And I'm also going to use this as a guide for tightening. As you can see, uh, the way I've got it oriented right now, the words Sharpie are, um, are um, visible or readable on this side, this cord. If I was to turn this around, the word Sharpie is upside down on this side. I'm going to use this <clears throat> as a reminder of which side I've tightened. So, you don't want this knot overall to be too loose that you're forced to do two tightening passes when you get to the Gorilla Glue. And if it's too tight, you'll never get your fire steel in there. So I'm going to start tightening now with um, Sharpie reading right side up, so from this side. I want to um, find that cord that pulls this loop. And I'm going to draw it so that we're snug around 
the Sharpie, the loop. Not tight, I'm not going to try to pull it tight, just snug. And that will allow me, uh, if I do this around the Sharpie, to make as many kits as I want and they'll have the exact size loop. Gives you that professional quality. Now I, I follow this around, pulling out the slack, and I'm going to tighten it a little bit. All right. I'm not going to over tighten it. Again, I think it's important that you recognize you won't be able to get your fire steel in there if you tighten it too much. So work your way around until it comes out the bottom. Here. Oops, I'm not at the bottom yet. See? Just keep going. Careful not to um, miss like I just did, or you will um, pull a fray out and basically ruin the finished product. Still going. Still going. Here we go. That should come out the bottom now. Alright. <clears throat> now I'm sorry. I just went through a tightening pass where Sharpie was legible. Right side up. That means I pulled from the side. So now I just find the side where Sharpie is upside down. That's here. Find out where that comes out, which is right here. Pull it snug, and then follow it around. So this ensures, like I was trying to explain a moment ago, that I um, do the other half of the knot. without having to do any um, figuring or, or close inspection to figure out where I just came from and where I want to go with this. All right. All right. Now that'll be a good, um, that's a good level of tightness here um, for installing the fire steel. A quick note on needle nose pliers. Again, I don't use a marlin spike. There's nothing I can't do with these needle nose pliers. And there's a lot I think you can't do with a marlin spike. Um, some people prefer needle nose pliers that don't have um, grooves on them because they feel that it's less likely to snare the paracord. I could not disagree more. Um, in my experience, without the grooves being able to give you a solid grip on the cord, you end up having to squeeze tighter. Eventually, it's, you still slip and it still grabs piece and uh, snares your paracord far more frequently than this um, set of needle nose pliers will. So I always, always, always use a set of pliers that has um, some grooves on it. The other thing is um, that I like about needle nose pliers it, and it's going to be critical in this particular project is the ability to close, close the ends here push the pliers into something and enlarge the, the hole enlarge the space because as you push it in you can see obviously you get a larger diameter here and um, that's going to be important for creating the space we're going to need to sneak the fire steel in when we do the install so here's the knot removed from the magic marker. Um, I will install it again on the magic marker when it comes down to tightening on the finished product. But I just wanted to illustrate for you that um, inserted between these two cords, the needle nose pliers up the middle. Push back and then released. Makes a nice little hole. That's where the fire steel is going to go. Okay, here we are to prep the fire steel. We're going to use a hacksaw to cut grooves in the end of the fire steel. We want those grooves to be within the area that will be covered by the knot. I'm going to have the end of the fire steel on the finished product stick up only slightly out of the knot. And the knot is going to shrink when, a bit when it's tightened. So we really want to keep the grooves within this area. What are these grooves going to do? Well, they're going to 
basically um, sort of create teeth that will grip between the paracord and the fire steel when the Gorilla Glue fills, expands, and hardens, uh, really connecting the two. I'm going to cut grooves in two directions. I'm going to use the hacksaw blade tilted this way to cut a series of grooves. Then I'm going to loosen the fire steel, spin it around, cut a series of grooves that way. That way I have uh, teeth angled in the fire steel to resist the pull in both directions. Then I will um, do that on say three or four separate segments of the fire steel, just small cuts. I put the fire steel directly in the vise. I found as long as it's gripped tightly, it is not going to scratch the fire steel. If you feel more comfortable, you can certainly feel free to um, put put a you know rubber or or something else around the uh, the fire steel. Now I want to be careful on my cuts that I don't slip out of the fire steel, slide along and scrape. Marring, marring the uh, material where it's not going to be covered specifically concerning when I'm going this direction because if I scrape I could scrape the whole fire steel that's going to be visible that's why I put it in the vise so the vise itself can protect the fire steel if I slide that way on that cut so let me do my first series of cuts this way Now you can see it will create sparks, so you want to make sure you're in a safe area with no flammables around. Now this is a very controlled cut. I am not going deep. It is not my goal to, to make the fire steel. See, I'm slipping a little bit, but that's okay. It's going to be covered. It's not my goal to make the fire steel um, brittle, um, not brittle, but weak, so that it breaks in this spot. And this doesn't have to be perfect either. All right. As long as it's covered and as long as it's grooved up, I've never had one of these handles come loose on me. All right. So basically, it's three or four, depending on how closely you put them. Three or four grooves. All right. Now I'm going to loosen the rod, turn it, tighten it, and repeat. This time I'm going to turn in this direction. have three and that's fine three or four like I said just want to make sure that you're going to be able to cover this so you don't want to go it's important that you don't go too far I assume you'll get better with experience gauging You might want to wear gloves when you do this. Might be a good idea. And if um, someone's taking this on as a um, Boy Scout project, something like that, make sure you're doing this with an adult. Alright, that should do it. I'll put one right here. See if I can zoom in on that. There you 
you go. Okay, now we're ready for installation. Before you start putting glue on anything, you want to make sure that you're capable of sticking your needle nose pliers, splitting these cords into the, your knot, creating a gap large enough that you could slip this in. It's okay if it touches the cord, just not too um, too tight or too loose. Get that fire steel to peek out the top like that. And then be able to install your reference um, magic marker here, which is going to control the size of the loop and keep allow you to keep track of which side you have begun tightening from. If you can do this, then you are indeed ready to bust out the Gorilla Glue and do the install. Gorilla Glue, as you can see here, is cured with moisture. It says to lightly dampen the bonding surfaces with water and then also a very thin layer of glue. This stuff expands and that factor in and of itself is what helps make this uh, design that I have here for a fire steel handle work so well and so securely particularly with Gorilla Glue. So I'm not going to moisten it, moisten it in advance I'm going to moisten it by dipping it in boiling water after we've installed the knot. The boiling water will suit this purpose here providing moisture but it will also shrink the paracord tighter than you could have tightened it by hand quick side note here this size loop that I'm doing here is, is to add, be able to add it to a kit like this but you could also make this loop itself long enough for a hand lanyard or you could make it long enough to wear the fire steel uh, by itself as a, a, a necklace certainly um, a minimalist kit. Okay, I just opened up the Gorilla Glue, spread a little bit on here. Now a little goes a long way. So I basically put a couple drops then try to spread it around covering the um, the grooves on the end of the fire steel. This stuff is going to expand and you're going to want to keep an eye on it while it's drying because it certainly uh, can start to come through the knot in the ends itself. You're going to want to clean that before it gets too solid. So now I take my fire steel um, handle knot that I tie. Again, I open the uh, open the bottom as wide as I can. Grab my fire steel. Insert. Yeah, bring it up the back. Now I have to. Get my magic marker in there. Now I'm ready to begin the tightening process. So, uh, with the Sharpie uh, word uh, upright, readable, I begin the tightening process. Now this I want tight. All right, this is it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it once from each side. And that's it. So you want to tighten this well. Bottom now to the other side, Sharp, word sharpie is upside down, that's this one.
just following following the cord around tightening it as tight as I can just about through here now you can tighten and let the pliers do the work grip the pliers close and then roll the pliers like that that um, does a lot uh, uses the muscles in your wrist to tighten instead of using this this small um, ligaments in your elbows where you could get a repetitive stress injury over time so let me I know it's not a good view here, but I want to give that a good, good pull. All right, now I can take it off here, I could tighten it a little further, it's not like the glue is going, um, going to dry immediately, but really your goal is to get it the way you want it um, one time through. In the end, we're not going to want to see a big thick um, piece of paracord coming out the bottom here. So we're going to want it to draw in as much as we can. Now the secret to getting that to draw in when we're done is to get these pulled really, really tight. It's going to pull excessively hard on that end and on this end. And then we want to cut it as close as we can. Once we do that, cut it as close as we can after pulling it tight, we're going to squish this knot, shape it with a pair of pliers, and that's going to actually draw this in a little closer. So to get it real tight without killing myself and without scratching the fire steel, I'm going to put this piece of cardboard on here between the fire steel and the rod. And I'm going to pinch this with my needle nose as close as I can. And then as I showed you before, I'm going to grab this and turn it. Now I'm using these large muscles as I mentioned in my forearms instead of using my, my whole body sort of, you know, yanking and trying to tighten that way. So it gets a lot tighter with a lot less effort. It's another reason why I like the pliers. There's just so many things you can do with them to make the job easier that you can't just do with a spike. Okay, good. Now that I've got that real tight, I'm going to take my Clean cut scissors, get a really close cut here. Same with this side, close as I can. Now take a good pair of um, a good pair of pliers. It's wide enough to grip and squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn. You're flattening the knot. You're squishing that glue in on the inside, you're shaping it, you're making it look professional. And look, as you do this, that is drawing back in to the knot on the bottom. The tighter you pull, the tighter you can pull that, the tighter you can pull that and the closer you can cut it, the more likely the end is going to entirely disappear when you do this part. All right, next step, last step, boiling. Okay, I just took the coffee cup, cleaned it out, filled it with water, threw it in the microwave for a couple minutes, got the water boiling. This is fresh out of the microwave, so I'm just simply going to take my um, fire steel, dip it in. This is going to, do, going to do two things as I mentioned. One, paracord will shrink. That makes that knot that much more tighter than it was that I was able to get it by myself. Also, the, um, the Gorilla Glue, as, as uh, we read, requires water um, moisture to activate. So that's it. The only thing I need to do now is keep an eye on this as it dries. I mean, you know, check it in a half an hour, hour or so, in case any Gorilla Glue is oozing out of the top, like that. You can see it there. Or oozing out of the bottom. I'll just take a paper towel and I'll wipe that off so it doesn't harden and become um, really visible in the final product. That's it folks.
hope you enjoy my intention um, soon is uh, to sell kits including all the pieces the right length of paracord the um, fat wood stick the uh, right length of jute and a fire steel and scraper so that people can make their own kits or give them as gifts or use them as scout projects and so on